tuck toe with me there, Trent. Clearly better at it than I am. <laughs> um, Rose, would you email that to me? So that way I have to respond to it and like fix it for you. If I write it down here, I'm going to forget. Yeah, just email that to me. All right, so if you were here a couple minutes ago, I had the whiteboard open just to kind of play around, see what it looked like with everyone on the tools. Um, we've got definitely have some artists in here, so that's pretty cool. Hmm. And you did not have any racer, which is interesting. So we'll have to I'll have to keep that in mind if we ever open up those whiteboard tools for you. Um, I'm going to see what kind of problems I can come up with so that we're writing on the board a little bit more than just me. <laughs> All right. So today we are starting unit five. Unit four was two lessons. So we did, we started it last week and then you had a play posit on Monday. So if you haven't done the play posit yet for Monday, you want to make sure you get on that. There's an exit ticket with it and an attendance quiz. And if you have any questions about it, you know, you can come see me in office hours and I'm happy to help. You can also email me any questions that you have. Um, sometimes if my schedule is booked up, I try to make you a video just so that way you get your answer as quickly as possible. And it's not always easy to type an answer into an email. <laughs> um, there will be an attendance quiz this session. Yep, there will. And what else do I want to say? Oh, we're starting unit five today. So unit five, if you're looking for the notes, they're in OMHS. You want to click on unit five and then today's date, day one. I have re-uploaded all of the PowerPoints so they're a little more printer friendly. They're not a whole bunch of colors. So when you do print them, hopefully they're not using as much ink for you. And that's that. So starting unit five. In unit five, we're going to be talking about congruent triangles. That's actually the title of the unit, congruent triangles. If we want to say that triangles are congruent, oh, hold on. Is the unit four test? Yes, the unit four test is open. Yes, it is. Unit four was so short because it was just a review of things that you quote unquote were supposedly have learned in the past, but I wanted to make sure that you got at least a taste of it. I didn't want to just throw some stuff at you and expect you to remember stuff from seventh or eighth grade. <clears throat> yeah. All right, back to congruent triangles. If two triangles are congruent, that means that they have all the par corresponding parts that are the same. They have the same size and the same shape. The parts of congruent triangles would be angles. So they have corresponding congruent angles and they have corresponding congruent sides. <laughs> so with congruent triangles, we can write a congruency statement. A congruency statement is going to say triangle, letter, 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 is congruent to triangle, letter, letter, letter. And those letters have to match up. So for example, in this picture, angle A has one arc on it, and so does angle D. They're congruent. So when I write my congruent statement, angle A and angle D have to be in the same spot. And then you see that angle B has two arcs on it, and so does angle E. So they're corresponding and congruent. So when I write my congruent statement, B is in the middle, E is in the middle. And of course, C has three arcs on it, so does F. So C has to correspond to F when I write the congruent statement. And I didn't have to write it in this order. I could have said triangle CBA. If I called that first triangle, triangle CBA, then the second triangle would be named so that C and F were in the same location. And B and E were in the same location, so in the middle there. And A and D. So however you name that first triangle will dictate how you name the second triangle. All of your parts, congruent parts, have to match up. It also works for your sides. So like looking at the triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF, AB and DE are in the same spot. Side AB and side DE are congruent. <clears throat> so there's a statement called CPCTC. And what it stands for is corresponding 
I ran no space, parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the C came from the word corresponding, P for parts, C for congruent, T for triangles, and C for congruent, C, P, C, T, C. Some, at some point, some mathematician was saying, well, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And they said it so many times that they were like, you know what? Let's make an abbreviation for it. This is too much. I don't want to say this every single time. Or I don't want to write this every single time. And so they abbreviated it to CPCTC. And you'll see this used in math classes across the country. We're going to call it. It's just an abbreviation for this phrase. And we're going to use this phrase a little bit later in the unit. It's going to come in super handy. So definitely don't forget that that exists. <clears throat> So the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. In other words, if you know two triangles are congruent, then you know all of their parts are congruent. Lovely. So let's practice it. In example one, it says that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle PQR. So triangle JKL and triangle PQR. If you're ever not given a picture, you're always allowed to write one or draw one. And I like to draw my triangles so that their parts look the same. So like J I put in the bottom here, so I put P in the bottom over here. K went to at the top and Q went at the top because those correspond. And L and R correspond. And then maybe I'll label my sides. J, K, the first two letters, have to correspond to P, Q. K, L has to correspond to Q, R. And JL has to correspond to PR. So the letters are the capital J is a, the vertex, a capital K is a vertex, and capital L is a vertex. But then JK is a side, and KL is a side, and JL would be a side. And now I have everything I need to answer this question. So what are my corresponding congruent angles? Well, angle J has to be congruent to angle P. You can look at your picture for that, or you could look at the name. J was the first letter and P was the first letter. Angle K is going to be congruent to angle Q. And angle L is congruent to angle R. And then we'll do the same thing with the sides. Side JK is going to be congruent to side PQ. Ooh, that's a Q. There we go. And what else do we have? KL will have to be congruent to QR. And JL congruent to PR. Lovely. Thank you, Rachel. Very nice. Now we could write a different congruency statement. The one they told us was triangle JKL is congruent to triangle PQR, but we could write a different one. We could name that first triangle in a different way. Same letters, just different order. So I could say triangle, uh, let's say KLJ. If I said triangle KLJ, then I would name the second triangle, don't forget the triangle symbol, QRP, yes. Wonderful. And notice I'm using capital letters. I'm using capital letters because I was given capital letters in my congruency statement. If you had to type this into an assessment, an exit ticket, test, or whatever, you want to make sure you're using capital letters. In the chat, I'm not too, too picky about that, but just make sure that if you're typing this into an assessment of any sort, that you're using capital letters. All right. Try number two. If you need to draw the picture, go ahead. You can draw the picture. That's fine. If you don't need the picture, you can do it just with the name. That's fine, too. Let's take like three minutes. Three minutes to do number two. Try that. And you don't have to type your answers in the chat. That's going to get to be a little much. Just write your answers down, and then you can check them with my answers in a moment. Three minutes.
All right, I put my answers on the board. Yours might be in a slightly different order. That's okay. As long as you have angle W and angle G congruent, you have angle X, angle F congruent, angle Y and angle G are congruent. And then your sides, WX is congruent to EF, XY congruent to FG, and WY congruent to EG. And again, if you wrote those slightly differently, but the letters still match up, then you're good. And maybe your congruency statement looks different than mine. That's okay, too. As long as your W and your E are in the same position, your Y and your G are in the same position, and your X and your F are in the same position, you're good. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the next example. On, a pic on an example like this, I will tell you that sometimes the picture is drawn to throw you off. So just be very careful with that. Your, your goal is to look at the, the congruency statement. That's what you want. The congruency statement will tell you everything you need. The picture is nice, but it's that congruency statement that you want. So like K is congruent to A. Angle P is congruent to angle Y. And angle M is congruent to angle C. And you could look at the sides. KP and AY are in the same spot. So KP and AY are congruent. PM, YC are congruent. And KM and AC are congruent. And maybe you didn't even need the picture. Maybe you can just use the name. That's okay too. But we just look to see what letter corresponds to K, A does. What letter corresponds to M, C does. So the answer here would be A, C. So that's for sides. Maybe with angles, don't forget your angle symbol. So like angle Y. Well, what letter corresponds to Y? P. The question is for part A, could you have written C, A? No. No, nope, because K has to match up. I don't know, where's my, come on, pin. K and A correspond. So you want your answer to reflect that. And M and C correspond. So you want your answer to reflect that. That was a good answer or a good question. One mistake the students do tend to make, and this is just a little thing, but just be careful, is this: make sure that if you have an angle that you're making it congruent to an angle. You don't want an angle congruent to a triangle or a triangle congruent to an angle. You want to make sure that Sides are congruent to sides, angles are congruent to angles, and triangles are congruent to triangles. So for F here, it says angle ACY, so I need to make sure I write angle, it's an angle symbol. A corresponds to K, C corresponds to M, and Y corresponds to P. And then over here, like part G, it says triangle, so I wanna make sure I use a triangle symbol so that a triangle is congruent to a triangle. M corresponds to C, P corresponds to Y, M corresponds to A, triangle C. -a. <laughs> All right, how do we feel about this stuff? Do we feel good? Do we feel meh? No idea what you're talking about. Tell me how you feel about your congruent parts. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, well, this is promising. Yeah, it is pretty simple. You just look at the letters and you match them up. And if you would like some practice on that, there are some practice problems on OMHS for you too. Awesome. This makes me feel good. Awesome. Let's look at the next example. What happens if there's numbers? Eh, same idea. Again, you want to make sure you're looking at the congruency statement. That's going to tell you everything you need. You now know all of the angles that are congruent and all of the sides just by looking at the congruency statement. So it says that S and B are in the same spot. So since S is 67 degrees, angle B will also have to be 67 degrees. Very good. Yay, Mohin. Good job. T and F. Hmm. There's nothing written on T and F. Let's come back to that one. W and N correspond. Well, N is 82, so it means that W has to be 82 degrees. Now, let's look back at T and F. 
we learned a theorem that says that if you have two angles in a triangle, you can figure out what the third one is. In the chat, tell me, how would you figure out angle T or angle F? What would you do? What would you type in a calculator? Or what would you write down to figure out angle T or angle F? What, either one. Type that in the chat. Tell me, what would you do? How would you find those missing angles? All right, on the right track, good. Yes, very good, Zorin, yes. <laughs> Rachel just told me the answer, okay. <laughs> Yay, Jalen, you even remembered the name of it. That's good. Yay, all right, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing there, guys. You make my day. The triangle sum theorem. The triangle sum theorem says you add your angles together. I'm gonna say angle T here. They have to add up to 180. Very good, Muhammad. Yep. And uh, some students wrote, oh, I would just type 180 minus 67 minus 82. That's fine. Some said, well, I would add the 82 and the 67 and then whatever I got, subtract that from 180. That works too. And if you're getting 31, you're getting it correct. And that is called the triangle sum theorem for those of us who want to put a name with it. Very good. Yeah, Colin, good job. <clears throat> All right, so that takes care of our angles. Now let's look at our sides. WS is nine. WS corresponds to NB. So I can put a nine centimeters there for NB. And let's see here. TS corresponds to FB. So since TS is 17 centimeters, BF will be 17 centimeters. And NF corresponds to WT, so WT has to be 14 centimeters. Great. Now I have everything I need to fill in these answers. Right. Once I put it in the picture, the answers should come pretty simple there. BN is 9 centimeters. TW, look at the picture, 14 centimeters. BF, 17. Angle W, we said was 82 degrees. Angle B, 67 degrees, and angle F, 31. On an assessment, I have already taken care of the units for you. All you have to do is type in your number. So don't type a degree symbol. Don't type in the centimeters. Just type in the number. I've already accounted for that unit for you. How did you get the sides? All right, let's see. I'll use yellow. Give me a second. Okay, so to get the sides, I'm looking at a side that I know. So in this case, WS. Look at the name. Ooh. W corresponded to N. And S corresponded to B. So WS and NB had to be the same. Cool. Yep, I love when those light bulbs go off. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and try number five. Try number five. This has a little bit of unit four in it with us too. Try number five. When you are finished with number five, give me a big old green check. So that way I know I can move on. I hate moving on if students are still working. So when most of us are done, we'll move on.
All right, let's take like another minute on this and then we're going to move on. The check is just to tell me you're done. <laughs> so if you're putting an X, I'm not sure what that means. All right, if you're still working, that's okay. I'm gonna put my answers on the board and then we can check our answers. All right, so if you're still working, keep going. I'm gonna put my answers here for us who are done. You can check your answers. There we go. In this example, we had an isosceles triangle. And isosceles triangles have two congruent sides, which means they also have two congruent angles. So in this isosceles triangle, it was nice and pretty like this. The other isosceles triangle, so just this triangle, like maybe flipped upside down. You still have two congruent sides. And the angles, the base angles are up here. All right, how do we feel about this congruent part stuff? Do we feel good? I hope that we do. What happens when we have expressions? Yay, I like to see all the positivity in the chat. It makes me happy. So in example six, they have si sides labeled. In example seven, they have angles labeled. So let's deal with example six first and talk about sides. If I were a student and I looked at this problem, I would want to know how am I gonna set up my equations? So I would say, well, let's write up some equations that relate the sides, looking at the congruency statement. So UV has to be equal to TS. I'm getting those letters from the congruency statement. VW is equal to SR. And the other one, what do we got? UW is equal to TR. And now those equations will help me set up what I need to solve for my variables. So UV, UV is 12x minus 7 and TS is 53. VW, VW is 57 and SR was 5y minus 33. And UW was 3Z plus 14, and TR is 50. If you have three variables, you're probably going to need three equations. And now the geometry part essentially is over, and we're going to play algebra. It's a game that I like. <laughs> Let's see. In green, I'm going to add 7 to both sides and then divide both sides by 12. So what do we get? X equals five. In red, let's solve for Y. I'm gonna add 33 to both sides. Divide both sides by five, 90 divided by five, 18. And in blue, I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides and divide by 3. There we go. So the trick is being able to set up the equations in the right way so that you get the right answers for the variables. The pictures are going to be drawn to maybe throw you off a little bit. So always go back to that congruency statement. <coughs> Let's look at number seven. Number seven, the angles are labeled for us. So looking at the congruency statement, let's see, where can I write this? Uh, it's all right, we'll try it here. We know that angle P is going to have to be equal to angle C since they're the first letter in the names. Angle H is going to have to be equal to angle N. And angle S is going to have to equal angle F. Now I can set up my equations. So I can say that 36, oops, so 36 equals 
C, what is C? 4Z minus 32. 8H is 6X minus 29, and N is 115. And then Z, Z, what did I say? Z, S, <laughs> S, there we go. S is missing. We don't know what S is. So I'm just going to leave that blank for a second. And that's going to have to equal 4Z minus 32. F, 3Y minus 1. There we go. And now we're going to solve. We're going to get a little stuck here when we start for Y. So let's solve for Z and X and see how those help can help us. So to solve for Z, I'm going to add 32 to both sides. I get 68 equals 4Z. Divide both sides by 4 run out of space. I'm going to write it over here. Z equals 17. To solve for X, I can add 29 to both sides. Divide both sides by 6. So X equals 24. There we go. And now for Y. Hmm. Well, in order to solve for Y, I need to know what angle S is. In the original picture, I can take that 24 and plug it in for x, do 6 times 24 minus 29. Or we know that h and n have to be congruent, so I already know this is 115. And when you plug in that 24, you'll get 115, which is fine. So now in triangle PHS, I have a 36, a 115, and I need to know angle S. So our triangle sum theorem is going to come to play. I'm going to say, all right, well, 36 and 115 and angle S have to add up to 180. Yep. So you subtract 36 and 115 from 180, and we get angle S is 29. <clears throat> all right, so angle S is 29. Now that tells me what 3Y minus 1 will have to be equal to. Add a 1 to both sides. Divide by 3. So there are our answers. There might be problems where it's kind of a mixture of both of these. They have sides labeled and angles labeled. Just always remember that a side has to equal a side and an angle can equal an angle. But you can never have a side equal an angle. That, doesn't, that wouldn't work. So just be very careful with that. All right. What happens if there's no picture? Oh my goodness. Well, we draw one, okay? So if there's no picture, draw one. You don't have to be a good artist. I clearly am not a good artist. I can barely crank out a triangle here, but we got it. We've got triangle DEF congruent to triangle JKL. And I labeled my triangle in order based on the congruency statement they gave me. If you already don't keep a wipe off board or marker or a paper or a notebook or something to write in when doing math, you should really get in the habit of that. I cannot imagine trying to solve this problem without some kind of scrap paper next to me. All right, once you have your triangles drawn, then go ahead and label all the given pieces. It says that DE is 18, EF, that's 23. DF is 9x minus 23. JL is 7x minus 11. Be careful, make sure you're labeling JL. JK is 3y minus 21. And then it says find the values of x and y. Since I have two variables, I'm going to need two equations. You can look at the names of your in your congruency statement, or if you drew your triangles based on that congruency statement, it might be easy to visualize what's congruent here. DF is congruent to JL, so you could say 9x minus 23 equals 7x minus 11. And then you can also see that your 3y minus 21, or JK, corresponds to DE 18. So you can say that 18 equals 3y minus 21. That 23 was a distractor for you. It's trying to get you to set it up wrong. So be very careful when you draw that picture. 
make sure that you really do have your corresponding parts in the right spot so you can write the correct equations. And now all you have to do is solve for those things. Add 21 to both sides, divide by three. There you go. This one's a little trickier. You have an X, 7X and a 9X, so we're gonna move those 7Xs over. Add a 23 to both sides, divide by two. There you go. All right, oh, I did it again. I forgot to give you your attendance word. Mm, let me go back and do that. Yeah, the 23 wasn't needed here. It was just more information than you needed. They wanted to make sure you knew how to set up the equation. That'll happen sometimes. They'll give you more information than you need to, to make sure that you know how to set up the equation and then you're not just guessing what equals what. Will we ever get a question that the X will equal a fraction or decimal? Sure you will. Um, decimals are numbers too. Don't discriminate against them. That's what I used to tell my brick and mortar students. Decimals and fractions are numbers. You could possibly get them. Um, when I've made your tests and quizzes, I have been very careful to tell you what to round to. So if you get a fraction or a decimal, it'll say round to the nearest tenth or round to the nearest whole number. It'll tell you what to round to. All right, let's see here. I forgot to give you your attendance word. So here it is. Your attendance word is missing. Your attendance word is missing, M-I-S-S-I-N-G. Capitalization doesn't matter, but spelling does. All right, missing. Makai, if you um, I just noticed that your hand was raised. You can type your question in the chat box there. All right, attendance word, you got that written down, you have it circled in your notes, highlighted. I don't know, you just did the attendance quiz and now you're done with it, whatever, you got that word. All right, wonderful, we've got the word. We've got one more example to do, it's kind of like number eight, except it's got angles that are missing. So let's draw a picture, since there wasn't one. Triangle QRS congruent to triangle MNP. Q, R, S, triangle, M, and P. I'm going to regret drawing this so big, but that's okay. All right, Q, S is 15. Here it is. M, P, 2X plus 1. Angle S is 84. Angle R is 32. Angle M is 17Y minus four. So here's an example where you have some sides labeled, some angles labeled. That's all right. Just remember that your corresponding parts are going to be congruent because these two triangles are congruent. Did I forget an R? Oh, QR is 11. Thank you, dear. There we go. So now we can set up our equations, right? If, if you drew your picture so that the letters corresponded, you hopefully can easily see that QS and MP will be equal. So you can say 15 equals 2X plus 1. That 11 was a distractor. They're trying to get you to say 11 equal 2X plus 1. Maybe trying to get you to draw your triangle wrong or something. So just be careful with that. And then our angle, well, we know that angle M has to be congruent to angle Q, but there's no number on angle Q. But we could find it. Because we know that the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, we know that 32, 84, and whatever angle Q is, they have to add up to 180. So we say, hey, calculator, what's 180 minus 32 minus 84? Calculator says, oh, that's 64. All right, if your calculator starts talking to you, um, go talk to your learning coach. It shouldn't actually be talking to you. <laughs> 
All right, so now we can say, oh, well, 64 equals 17y minus 4. All right, so they try to get tricky with the triangle sum theorem. They try to give you two angles and make you think you're missing something, but always keep that triangle sum theorem in the back of your head because it comes up a lot. And now all we do is solve. See, let's subtract a 1 from both sides here in red. Divide by 2. Um, over here, add 4 to both sides. Divide by 17. And there you are. Okay. So that was the end of the notes. Pretty easy today, I think. There are practice problems on OMHS if you want to check them out. Those are really good um, questions to bring to office hours. When you come to office hours and you say, hey, can we do quiz 4-1? I can't. I can't go over quiz questions. I can't go over exit ticket questions or test questions. But I can go over any questions from the practice. So if you're stuck, let's say you do the exit ticket and you don't do well on it, go try some practice problems. Find some questions to ask me in office hours before you do the second attempt.